A bit like last time, you can't see all, all the class, but we'll switch it around. When I said to them, we're probably going to talk to them for a little bit and then they'll have time to ask questions. Okay. So. All right. Um, so, so, okay. I'll talk for about 10 minutes and then uh, we can do a little Q&A afterwards, all right? Is the volume all right, guys? Yep, perfect. Okay. Sikhism, right? It started about 500 years ago on paper. But the way that we say is that the gurus, they were sent upon earth. Um, with a mission to kind of bring back the truth that was lost. So the truth has always been here, this way of Sikhiya, but it was lost a little bit. So the Gurus came back to just make it really clear. Uh, so I'm going to start with this, the message of what, the, what Sikhi is, and we'll talk about how that shows up in the lives of the Gurus and the writings of the Gurus. Right, so um, the spiritual message is very simple, yeah? There's a one divine being from which all of us came yeah all of us right and actually we're inside that being right now we're not somewhere separate from god if you want to call it god god isn't far away god's right here we're inside god okay so i want you all to just put your hand up just put your hand up okay and touch your top of your head okay see that spot there okay there's like an energy center there Right? And this energy center, I'll put your hands down now. Okay? This energy center on top of your head, this will allow you to connect to the one who made you. Yeah? It's inside you and all around you. Right? So that's the, the main message is that it's possible for all of us to connect to the one that made us. It's not like some dreamland or you wait till you're dead and you go to heaven. Right here, right now, Whilst we're alive, we can connect to God. That's the, the first part of that message. The spiritual message is we can, uh, we can actually start to merge with God. So we can start to become godly and we can start to experience the power of God. And the, the, some of the things that come with this connection, the first one, which you're going to like, yeah, is bliss. It's like a lot of spiritual bliss. Like imagine the best thing you ever done and the happiest you ever felt, yeah, and just multiply that by, like as many times as you can. Yeah, that's how much bliss you can get from connecting to this being that made you. Yeah, because it's the best thing in the world. Right, that's the one thing you gotta understand about God. God has to be the best thing in the world. Otherwise, if something was better than God, then that thing would be God, right? So, we can connect to this thing right here, the top of our head. Okay, and it's nothing. It's nothing special. We've all got one. Everybody, everybody's got one. So um, there's nine uh, visible holes to the body. Yeah, they're visible because you can see those ones. And the tenth one is hidden. All right. So let's count to the first nine. Yeah, all of us will count through together. Are you ready? Okay. One nostril. Two other off nostril. Yeah. Three one eye. Four the other eye. Okay, five, one ear, six, another ear, right? Seven, your mouth, right? Okay, two below, don't count, don't touch those, just get, be, it's where we go to the toilet from, okay? That's nine, and the tenth one is here. We've all got one, okay? Now, a lot of, a lot of religions, a lot of people tell you you can't see God, right? But Sikhism doesn't tell you that. Sikhi says you can see God. If you start to connect to God, you'll be able to experience God and you'll be able to see the light. It's simple as that. And um, Guru is telling us that the way to connect to this one is just to call the one. Literally, just call out. Wherever you are, whichever how much time you can spend, just call God. Just say God. Yeah. And we use a word called Waheguru. Right, that's our word. That's our Guru's words. He's given us to use that word. But you can use any word you want. If you if you like God, 
or you like master or lord or whatever word you want you can just call god and literally just spend time like five minutes ten minutes twenty minutes just sitting down and calling god yeah that so, so that's the main message is we can connect to god um and it's going to be a very blissful experience and we just have to call god on the on the moral side yeah the moral message is, is very much like that one i just talked about yeah there's only one human race um, and everybody is equal so we're all equal beings we all come from this one um, and there's no discrimination whether you're male or female you're black you're white uh, you're of one religion or another religion we're all equal okay so it's very hippie in that way and actually as Sikhs don't care about religion like we don't care what religion you are we recognize that you are a human being you've got a light of God inside you you can connect to God so we're not trying to convert anybody either. Some people choose to be Sikh, like my wife. She's Russian, uh, she's white, she chose to be a Sikh. But we don't try to tell people, you have to be a Sikh. Yeah? We say, this is the way to connect to God, just call God. The same light is within you as within me. Um, and in terms of moral living, how we should try to live as human beings, we should try to help people as much as we can. So life on earth has like two main purposes, yeah? The first purpose is to connect to God from here. And the second purpose is to help people. Yeah, So you earn honestly. You live a decent life. You don't run away to the, um, the mountains because the world is too complicated. You're just trying to help people, um, You know, either by helping them to understand what life is about or by serving them food you know, or giving them education. So that your teacher is doing a very good thing. Yeah, Well done, Miss Emily. Right? These are the kind of things that we should be doing, helping people. Right, so that's the message. Now, uh, if this is the message, then the gurus, um, their lives and what they wrote down reflects that that oneness. Yeah, that we're all human, we're all equal, um, and that we can all connect to this one that made us. So, uh, a good example: the gurus, yeah, they done something very interesting uh, when they made the uh, the like the temple or the gurdwara, as we call it. They gave it two parts. The first part. Is where we pray, but we all sit down on the same floor, we're all equal. But the second part is where we all eat food. And we're all equal, yeah? Everybody sits in the same uh, place and eats the same food. And that's trying to say to people that instead of just talking about equality, you need to actually practice equality. There's no point in me telling you we're all equal, but I go somewhere else to eat on a higher table and leave you to eat uh, somewhere else. Because equality has to be practiced, yeah? So you have to break down those barriers. So the Gurus made this system called Langar, which is in every Gurdwara, and anybody is welcome. It doesn't matter what religion you are, it doesn't matter what color you are, what caste you are, what race you are, whether you're male or female, anybody is welcome into this place to have free food, right? And it gives me a chance, other people a chance to actually serve the person who comes to eat. So anybody can go in there and decide to cook food and give it out to people. All right. Um, now, there's something interesting you guys might not know about. Okay, the six. You know, there was ten gurus, yeah, ten physical gurus. You heard about that, right? So that's the sixth one. The sixth one did something very interesting. Yeah, he was because this gurus we see them as like uh, kings. They are spiritual kings, but they're also worldly kings. They live in the world and they have she rule the Sikh kingdom. And the sixth guru, in his kingdom, there was a lot of Muslims. And the Muslims didn't have a mosque. So they had, they had no money for a mosque. And they didn't have the land. So the sixth guru built them a mosque. Yeah? Just to prove that we're all equal and anybody can pray to God. They actually made them a mosque. Yeah? Then his son, much later, became the ninth guru. Yeah? It went, it went different generations and it came back to him. So now his son, the ninth guru, did something very interesting as well. Yeah? At one point, some uh, group of fanatical people... We're trying to convert uh, some of the Hindus to become Muslim. Okay? And the ninth guru, he gave his life to protect their freedom to practice their religion. So although he was a Hindu or Muslim, he stepped in to try and stop one group from converting another group forcibly. Yeah? So he gave his life. He was actually beheaded in Delhi, the capital of India, for this reason. Yeah? So the gurus, they didn't just talk about this. They actually set up a system called Langar to say that equality is important. 
they actually, you know, gave their lives and, um, you know, did actions to prove that we're all equal, we're all just one human race, and religion does not matter. Only God matters. All right? Um, now I want to talk about something very interesting, which is the 11th Guru, yeah? Which is the text. So, when you go, if you ever go visit a Sikh temple, what you will see is, when you go into the front, you will see uh, the holy book, the Sikh Guru Granth Sahib, yeah? That's the 11th Guru. What's really interesting is, yeah, that there's 36 people's writings inside Guru Granth Sahib Ji. Yeah? But obviously, I told you before, there's only 10 Gurus, yeah? And in fact, from the Gurus, only 6 of them have their writings inside Guru Granth Sahib Ji. So there's 30 other people whose writings, who are not the Guru, but their writings are inside the Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And when we go to a Gurdwara, we actually bow down with our forehead on the ground in front of that Guru Granth Sahib. So we respect writings of 30 other people yeah, enough to bow down to it, even though they're not our Guru. And those people are from maybe, some of them are Muslim, some of them are Hindu, some of them rejected all religion, but they were all saints. So the way that we talk about it is that Sikhi is the path of the saints. Yeah. So the saints can be from any religion, but the thing that the, that the saints are all about, they always have the one in mind. Yeah. They have a lot of love. They want to serve people. Uh, they want to help people. And this is the path that we are walking. We're walking the path of the saints. And also they sing. Yeah. Do you like singing? Do you guys like singing? Yeah. So when you go to a Gurdwara, we all sing. We get music. We get drums. We've got instruments. And we sing to God. And we sing the songs that our Guru wrote for us. So the whole of the Guru Granth Sahib Ji, from beginning to end, is all songs. There's no long, boring essays, yeah? There's no, there's no stories about people went from here to there, then there, then they got smoten, they went somewhere else, and they got smoten. There's no stories. It's all songs. right? So we just sing to God. And we find that's the easiest way to open this. Because it, it builds love. So when you, when you sing, you can feel emotions. yeah. So when you start to fall in love with God, then loving God is the fastest way to open that. And you've all got it, yeah? Do you like your eyes? Do you like your ears? You're going to love this. It's just as important. Yeah? Even more important. And we've all got one. So, so what, what Sikhi is trying to say, right? We're all one human race. We all got to do good as much as we can. Okay? And we can experience God right here, right now. Not in some heaven in the future, but here. And the way to do it, right, is simply to sit down and call God. And if you're lucky, try and find some people who are also interested in finding God. Right? And sit down with them. Together. So one plus one is 11. Yeah? So when you get together, that power is that much more. And you can actually call God, you can experience it. And it's amazing. You'll love it. Just try it by yourself. Go home, sit down and just say, God, 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 for half an hour if you can. But you, it's really, really amazing what you can feel from it. Alright? And that's the message of Sikhi. Alright, I'll stop there and you can ask me any questions you want. Perfect. Thank you very much. What I've said to them is some of them are just going to stay where they are, but a few of them might just come up and actually use the microphone if they All want. Right. So uh, if you guys put your hands up uh, and if you want to, if I, uh, if you want to come up and that's fine. Matt, do you want to actually come here? Yeah, that's fine. You can stay sat here as well if you want. Got Matt who's in our corner, totally hidden from you at the moment, but he's coming over here to ask questions. Do you believe that to today's Khalsa are as strong as the first people in the Khalsa that to Guru God bin Sai made? Oh, that's a great question, Matt. Wow. Yeah, you can say that, Matt. Wow, yeah. that's a great question. <laughs> okay, you know, um, in the, there's a saying that people have nowadays, yeah? That in the old days, the buildings, the Gurdwara buildings, they were like mud. They weren't very strong, right? But the Sikhs were really strong. Like they would do some amazing stuff. Yeah, They would fight against injustice. They'd be getting killed by the hundreds and they wouldn't care. And what they say is that nowadays, the Sikhs are not so strong, but the buildings are made of concrete. 
Yeah. And I would say that's true. Unfortunately, a lot of us have become, because gurus were so long ago, like 300 years ago, there's a lot of corruption that's come into the system. But, do you know what? Only 25 years ago, in India, there were some great things. They were doing some amazing stuff, right? And even right now, there's one guy called by Balwan Singh Rajawana. He's done some amazing stuff as well. So I do think that although the numbers aren't as great, there's still some really powerful Sikhs out there. So, you know, we, it keeps us strong and hoping. Awesome, thanks. Uh, right, hands up. Who else? Connor. Do you want the... Oh, you That's fine. I still need to get to hear it. Uh, he's saying, do you, uh, do you believe in the 5Ks? Yeah, I, I wear the 5Ks, yeah. So I, I took that... When I was about um, 21, I was at university, I, I looked like you guys. I was clean shaven, no turban, no beard. And um, then I decided when I was 21... Uh, because basically I, I sat down and did some meditation with some people and it worked. Yeah, I actually felt God and I was so amazed by it that I decided to just change my life. So I stopped drinking, I stopped doing all some of the silly stuff I was doing and I started following this path and praying and stuff like that. Uh, and that was when I was 21. So yeah, I've been carrying the, I've been wearing the 5K since I was 21. Brilliant. Uh, Callum. Um, does this mean you're in the castle? Yeah, yeah. I, I, when I was 21, I, I took that initiation ceremony. I don't know if you know about it, but it's like a castle initiation ceremony. The thing that was interesting, yeah? You guys might know about that ceremony. You know, nowadays, uh, when they tell you about the ceremony, they tell you that the people have to wear 5Ks and stuff like this, yeah? Right? Do you know, the first five, the first five that went up to take this ceremony, they didn't go there expecting to get the 5Ks. Just, just remember that the five, they didn't go there to get the five Ks. They went there to lose their head. The Guru asked them, who's prepared to give their life today for this faith? Yeah? And they stood up and they said, I'll do it. So the point of it is not to, to get the five Ks. The point of it is that from now on, you're now a dedicated member of this army, if you want to call it. And you now, your job is to protect other people, even if it kills you. So you have to be armed in order that you can defend someone. It's not a weapon to go and offend against somebody. It's a defensive weapon to defend yourself and defend anybody else. So the gurus giving their lives to defend another religion is an example that we can do now. So if somebody is being oppressed, then a Sikh can't walk past and say, Oh, well, it's nothing to do with me. I haven't got anything to do anything. I haven't got a sword or anything. We have to carry one. So it's like being proactive about doing stuff. Yeah? And no fear of death. That's the whole point. Don't fear death. Because we believe in reincarnation and we believe that we will come through like loads and loads of lives. Yeah? And right now, as a human being, you're at the top of that chain. Yeah? It's like 8.4 million chances. And right now, all of us, yeah, me included, you guys included, we're at the top of that chain. And here's our chance. We can actually connect to God. We couldn't do it when we were a pig or a cat or a dog and all those things. Some of us were trees once, yeah? It wasn't very interesting. There's a lot of time just spent standing around doing nothing, right? Here's your chance. Here's your chance as a human being to connect to God. And we shouldn't blow it. We should try our best to do it. Uh, brilliant, guys. Questions? Chris, did you have a question? Yeah, yeah perfect. Do you want to come up here, Chris? What is your norm, normal day like and what's your job? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, normal day, you should uh, get up uh, as early as you can and try and do your prayers at least before breakfast. Right? And then you go about your normal working day. And then in the evening, uh, before you have your dinner or in the evening sort of thing, do your evening prayers. And then you have nighttime prayers right before you go to sleep. So there's three sets of prayers. The biggest one is the morning, and then you got like a smaller part, like about 20 minutes in the evening, and then about 5-10 minutes in the night time. Yeah? But every Sikh should work, so it's built around your working life. It's not that you have to stop in the middle of the day to pray. It's like morning, evening, night time. Um, and also, um, like me personally now, what I do is I just go and teach people about Sikhi. So I quit my normal job, and now I do this. 
uh, telling people about Sikhi, but mostly I tend to focus upon people that are already in Sikhi from the Sikh community um, at universities, colleges, stuff like that, uh, at work. Uh, but I, t I do this full time now on me personally, but most Sikhs would just go out and do their normal working job. We're not allowed to beg. That's one really important thing I want to tell you guys, yeah? That uh, as Sikhs, we're not allowed to beg. We have to earn our living, you know, honestly. Uh, any other questions? Oh, uh, Ben, you gonna come? There we go. Do you eat different food to us? Like... Okay, yeah. Oh, no. Right, in terms of food, yeah? The, the only thing we definitely cannot touch ever is meat which is halal or kosher. It's the opposite of how you might think of it, yeah? We're not allowed to eat halal meat or kosher meat because uh, that's killed. We don't think it's killed in the right way. They'll let it bleed. It suffers a bit more. Yeah. So we don't touch that. Um, most Sikhs voluntarily are vegetarian. Most of them. Yeah. Um, the ones that practice it. But there's no strict rule one way or the other. Um, I would say that in this world, it's probably better to be vegetarian because most animals aren't treated nicely. Yeah. And you have to remember. We've all been animals, yeah? There's a soul in that animal, the same as a soul in us. There's no difference. It's just going through a different life. So if you don't treat that animal nicely, yeah, then it's going to, then it possibly, in your next life, if you don't make it, you're going to get treated not so nicely as well. There's karma involved, yeah? So try and limit your bad karma. Uh, right, other questions. Sam? There's loads of questions. <laughs> All the boys are being brave. Uh, yeah. this, this class is more exciting than the previous class. They were not asking any questions at all. They were very shy. Well, I said this is my tutor group, so uh, <laughs> they know I'll just make fun of them if they get all chickens. <laughs> um, how do you get treated as a Sikh? Yeah, a couple of them were asking right. me this before about do you ever face kind of discrimination for, for the way you look and for being a Sikh? Yeah, a lot of the time people do look at you, they stare, they wonder, you know, What's it all about? Why have you got this turban and beard? Um, we Sikhs aren't very good at telling people why we have this. Uh, the reason we have this, yeah? Do you remember I told you about that ninth guru who, was, uh, who gave his life to save Hinduism? Yeah? So this was in central Delhi. When this happened, <coughs> there was a lot of other Sikhs around that were there. But what happened is that when they got asked, um, anybody who's a Sikh come forward, they all chickened out as well. Yeah? Only three of them came forward and those three guys were also killed. But there was about 497 other people and they all chickened out. So the 10th Guru, yeah, he decided that he's going to give us this look so we can never deny who we are. So it's actually designed to make us, um, it's actually designed that we can't ever deny who we are. So um, that's the reason. And, and you do get, and you do sometimes get stared at. And sometimes people say silly names, um, but to be honest, that's more because they don't know who we are, because Sikhs don't tell people. I think if they knew, they wouldn't say anything. So it's our fault really, not anybody else's. Thanks. I'm going to move the camera around a little bit, because we've only got a couple of minutes left, but okay. I'd like those people who've been a bit invisible to you to be able to be seen. So right. yeah, go. Right. Uh, I'd actually... <laughs> uh, if you don't mind, before we actually end the call as well, if you wouldn't mind actually having a photo taken with the class, okay, do that. Uh, if that if that <laughs> might be all right, because it'd be quite cool to have that. You'd be quite big on the screen, but okay. uh, if you don't mind. <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, Callum. It's too funny. Um, like you said, we um, before we were in so we're inside of God. Yeah. Does that mean there's a world outside of God? Yeah. Okay. All right. No, there's, there's, there's nothing but God, yeah, that's all there is. We say that the one, everything came from the one, it all expanded. So all of us uh, were initially all one and we quite liked being in that, in God, yeah, connected to God, right? We were all once connected, then we all got separated and we came out. And you know the Big Bang, they say it started from one as well. So it was all one, then it expanded out like this, right? And inside that, when the expansion came, people became a bit disorientated and they forgot who they were. They forgot they were part of God, right? So all of us now, we don't feel connected, but we all got this thing here and we can get connected again. So there's nothing but this one. 
There's no world outside of God. There's a multiverse and all that kind of stuff. But God is both here and nowhere kind of thing. It's, it's, it's hard to describe. There's a video on our channel. We've got a YouTube channel. It's called Who is a Seat God? If you want to go home and watch that video, that might help. Oh, thank you. Uh, we'll have to go in about two minutes, if that's all right with you. Okay. Just to let you know, the connection's getting a little bit worse, but we can still hear you now. Uh, I'm going to ask guys you stay where you are just so that we can try and get a few extra questions. Misha? I'll be short now. Thank you. No, sorry. It's just uh, I know there's, there's so many of them, which is brilliant. I want to ask questions. So, uh, uh, Misha said, what, sorry, can you repeat that? <laughs> educate yeah. she says uh, do you think it's important to educate people about Sikhism I think so I think Sikh should uh, the message is very unique I think in the world so it's good to spread that message and also um, I think the Sikhs uh, they don't they should tell people who they are because people keep misunderstanding who we are so you know when we live in a culture a society which is all mixed up is the more we know about each other the more we can get along yeah excellent uh, Jensen Yeah, excellent. Uh, he's asking about if you're allowed to use your kapan and would you end up in prison if you did use it? Yeah, so I'm allowed to carry it. It's not a crime for me to carry it wherever I go. If I use it, it's treated just like a normal weapon. I just don't get fined for concealing it. So if I use it, then I have to face the consequences. But if a seat uses a kirpan, it's normally only for the, as a last resort. Not for, for like everything you think about, just pull out the sword. It's not that kind of a thing, yeah? yeah. We, it's, it's the weapon of last resort. So that's what Guru said, that when all else means have failed, then it's righteous to pick up the sword. So, yeah, I would face consequences, but you expect to face them. Uh, I'm going to ask what I predict a few of them would want to, is would it be okay if they could see your kapan? Because I know that that was something right. that the few of them were interested in. Would that be okay with you? Oh, it's in my fish. Yeah. yeah, I'll show you. My wife's is here. Mine's tucked underneath my shirt. I'll just show you this one. Sorry, thank you. Wow. <laughs> there's, there's a, it's got a flower in it as well. It's dec beautifully decorated. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> They're very impressed by that, actually. <laughs> that is cool I like I said, I, can I know these guys, so I knew what they were all thinking. They wanted to see it. Show me your sword. All uh, the adults right, ask the same question. It's not just the, the kids. All the adults ask the same question. Can I see your sword? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to, I'm afraid, make it our last question, guys. But Alex. So the, the long hair. So you were saying about the long hair before, weren't you? Yeah. So okay. do you get any Sikhs who don't have cash? Yeah. The, uh, still Sikhs? You know, um, only those people that take on that ceremony of baptism have to keep their hair. Yeah. That's the rule for those guys. So my wife is taking it, I've taken it. Yeah, they become part of the Khalsa. But if you're not part of the Khalsa, there's a lot of Sikhs who aren't part of the Khalsa, um, but they don't have long hair. And they might cut their hair like my brother, my dad. They don't have long hair. Yeah, they're clean shaven. They've got, they've got no, no turban on their head either. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's choice. Sikhi is all about choice. You choose to become part of the Khalsa. If you don't want to be part of the Khalsa, then you don't have to be part of the Khalsa. Yeah, there's no kind of like, um, the Guru was all about choice. Even, just to give you one example, you know how in, in a lot of other faiths, if you leave that faith, then they just, uh, they, they try to kill you or something, try to get rid of you totally. Yeah, That's, so we don't have that concept. Uh, there was once a time where 40 Sikhs left, uh, in the middle of a battle, they left our Guru. They said they can't live in this way anymore. They wanted to go back home. And Guru, Guruji said, okay, that's fine, just write me a letter saying you're no longer my Sikhs and you can go. And even the First Second World War, people who left a battlefield, they were shot for desertion. But the Guru here didn't shoot them, just let them go. They left the religion and they left him in the middle of a battlefield and he just let them go. It's all about freedom. It's all about choice. Thank you. The bell is going to go any sec. So I think because they are, and I'm so proud of them actually for how many questions they have got. I may, if it's all right with you, uh, email you a couple of them, if that would be all yeah, right for you to just email a little response. Would you mind if we could have a photo as a whole class? Oh, I could great. obviously I let it. you have it as well. <laughs> uh, right, okay. So if you guys all want to kind of get around that, and I'm going to try and take... This is so cool. <laughs> It's um...
it's quite faint of you, but you can see you're there, so I'll email it to you. Okay? Oh, thank you. Thanks, Thanks you guys. Thanks for your time. Really, really nice speaking Thank to you. Bye. 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 <laughs> awesome. Thank, Thank you. All right. Thanks, Emily. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye.